from the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. Do you remember when we were told not long ago that we're better off with Iran than we used to be? Listen to this first headline. Iran could produce enough uranium for a bomb in two months. Can you believe that one? Also, Muslim Sharia showdown in Brussels, Belgium. Belgium has a very tender spot in Jack's heart because that's where his parents are from. Also, Ayatollah Syed Ali Khomeini says, the rule of Islam over all the world. That's their goal. And we will be discussing that in just a moment. But I know you've been saying, oh, these programs have been so very, very serious. And actually, Jack hasn't given any humor in the beginning of our programs for quite a while. But just before we went on, he said, you know, there's some something that just came to my mind I want to share. It's a joke, isn't it, Jack? Oh, it really is, Rexella. Do you remember when John F. Kennedy became the president of the United States of America? And he went to Germany to speak, and he wanted to identify with the people. And so he shouted out over the microphone, Ich bin ein Berliner, and man, they applauded. Well, can you imagine what would happen if Biden had become our president? And I'm, he had to go to Frankfurt, Germany, and he'd probably say, Ich bin ein Frankfurter. Oh, <laughs> and I believe he is a real hot dog from what oh, I heard dear. that night. We have a man, oh. Nolan Finley, a great journalist in the Detroit News, and he said, after I heard that guy with all his grimacing and all the facial things he did and acting as a rude bully, he said, I was so glad that Obama was still alive <laughs> and that this guy wasn't our president. And it's true, I'll tell you. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. James 1.8, that's Biden. Oh, yes. Well, we're going to be going on now for some very, very serious uh, headlines and things that we need to consider in our own minds and hearts right now. The U.S. or a U.S. Security Institute that advises Washington policymakers says, Iran is a great threat as it continues to produce uranium for nuclear program. And there you see it, Iran could produce enough uranium for a bomb in two months. Two months. North Korea says missiles can strike continental U.S. Now, Iran's not the only one. We've got North Korea also. He said, we want to strike the U.S. They're uniting. And spy chief sees Iran threats in the United States. Can you believe it? They're all really talking about it. And Iranian militias pose threat to the United States. Once again, Iran threatens to hit Israel and the United States bases. Now, you know, last week we were talking about a great war. In fact, we ended the program talking about the Battle of Armageddon and all the rest. Well, this week we want to consider terrorism. Are we really under a threat from Iran and North Korea as far as nuclear weapons are concerned? What do you think, Jack? Oh, Rexella, people do not know that they're closely having this bomb because hundreds of North Korean scientists have been living in Iran helping them make the bomb. And you know they have a tremendous bomb in North Korea already. So we're in trouble. And last week I said, when you come to Ezekiel 38 and 39, the greatest war in history, and that's Russia, Persia is united with them, and Persia changed its name to Iran in 1935. So we have the scripture to back what we're saying. Now, here's something that is shocking. Iran has trained 45,000 men to become suicide bombers and has trained 1,500 in Iraq to do the same. For a total of 46,500 suicide bombers to go to every part of the globe and begin running into people like they did in Iraq and other places. It's a dangerous time to be alive, but let me give you the good news. Jesus said in Luke 21, 
Verse 9, when you hear of wars and commotions, wars and terrorism, wars and revolutionaries, be not frightened. These things must first come. Before what? When they're coming, verse 27, then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. The return of Jesus. And then verse 28 says, when these things begin to come to pass, and they have, look up, your redemption draws nigh. What's that? The redemption of our bodies, Romans 8, 23, when he cries out, come up hither, and we go up to meet Christ in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. But there is more. Jesus went on to say in verse 31, when you see the thing coming into full blast, and it's going to happen soon, you know my kingdom is near when I return as the king of the kings and lord of the lords, Revelation 19, 16, to rule and reign for 1,000 years, Revelation 20, verse 4. And when he returns, he comes to put a stop to those who are destroying the earth and destroying one another. And that, of course, is Revelation 11:18. But one more thing, going back to Matthew 24, where we talked about this time of terrorism, he adds in verse 32, the generation that lives to see these things, that's you and me, we're the generation that's seeing all this terrorism and talk about war involving Iran and these other nations. That generation shall not pass from the earth. They shall not die. They shall go up in the twinkling of an eye, as I said earlier, the coming of the Lord draws nigh. Be ready. Mm, my, oh my. I love that, don't you? The coming of the Lord draws the nigh. Now, did you notice in all the headlines I've already given you, I used the United States and Israel mainly. Headlines about the United States. Well, the United States is not the only one involved, especially in this program today. The Europeans are very, very concerned. Look at this. Your faces fight over free speech. Hamburg, Germany. Now, here, Jack, I'd like for you to read, if you would, what this gentleman has to say, Abdul Imar. And uh, he's a Muslim, and he talks about their goals. Would you like to I'm read that, Belgian please? I'm Belgian-American, and this shocked me. And this was an interview that was played throughout Belgium and Holland. Brussels is the capital of Belgium and the European Union, but some are now calling it the Muslim capital of Europe. The most confrontational Muslim group here is Sharia for Belgium. The Sharia for Belgium head, Abu Imran, sounded very serious when he told CBN News he expects Muslims to dominate Belgium and the world. Like in many countries across Europe, a cultural war over Islam is well underway in Belgium. Imran is looking forward to someday replacing Belgian law with the Sharia law, including amputation for theft, get this, stoning for adultery, and death to homosexuals. Did you know that's the blasphemy law? I don't think we're very far away. The victory of Allah is very near, so I think the West and Europe needs to prepare itself for a wave of Sharia and Islam. Ladies and gentlemen, as a Belgian-American, I'm very upset. For they say we already are 25% of the population of Brussels, Belgium, and in Antwerp, we have 40% of the kids who are Muslims attending the schools. And he said, we're going to do the same thing in Holland, Amsterdam, and Rotterdam. They're planning to take over all Europe. And they say Brussels will be the capital of the Islamic terrorists in the future. Brussels. We're going to make that our capital. And we're going to make Jerusalem the capital for our group in the Middle East. We are in real trouble. And next week, ladies and gentlemen, the most requested program I've ever had through mail will be repeated. Don't miss it. One week from the night or day you're listening to this message, it's going to be the strongest thing proclaiming what's going to happen to the world soon. Mm, thank you so very, very much, Jack. And now, because of Belgium, you know, his parents are from Belgium. He, he feels very, very moved by all that. But Belgium's not the only country in Europe facing this. All of Europe, take a look, in Holland, free speech, 
on trial. Now, of course, that was the lawmaker there. He was, he was a member of the Dutch Parliament. Dutch court acquits anti-Islam lawmaker. A trial for one yes, year. Yes, and Wilders. Oh, now, today is a victory for freedom of speech. The Dutch are still allowed to speak critically about Islam. And resistance against Islamization is not a crime. In other words, resisting the fact that we want to vote and be exactly what we want to be and not forced into a system that we do not want. We want to speak out about this. So that lawmaker was acquitted. Now, Jack, explain. In fact, I was talking uh, to our director before. Do many people know, Jerry, what blasphemy law really means? And he said, not many that I know. How about it, Jack? Explain the blasphemy law, will you please? The blasphemy law gives Islamic terrorists the right to put anyone to death who speaks out against Muhammad or the Quran. You've seen it happening in unbelievable places just recently. Remember Salman Rushdie? A 10-year death sentence on him because he made some ridiculous remark about a wife of Muhammad. I'm not sure that he's been absolved even until now. He's been under guard all these years. A little 14-year-old girl in Pakistan just a week ago stood up against the Islamic terrorists and said, I want to get education, I want to go to school, and she's getting all the little girls to stand with her, and they put a bullet in her neck and her head. And now they said, once she recuperates, we're going to kill her. A little 14-year-old sweetheart. Now they've transferred her to England for safety and for healing. She's coming back. This is a wicked law, and it's against our Holy Bible. Thou shalt not kill, Exodus chapter 20, verse 13. What happens when you do? Turn the page, chapter 21, verse 12. He that smites a man so that he dies shall surely be put to death. Leviticus 24, 17. He that kills any man shall surely be put to death. But these guys aren't being put to death. This is their law. And Sharia law is far worse because then, no matter what they do, honor killing, get rid of their daughters because they had sex with someone. The father, the son, or the cousin. Kill them. Honor killing. So you don't judge them because this is something great. They've done something good. They've protected their holy name as a family. God forgive us. And then the ones who don't like you and they even create information against you that's false, then when you've got the Wahhabites, Bin Laden's crowd, or the Taliban, bunch of murderers, and you get all these different groups, Hezbollah, Hamas, and in Iraq, as you remember, the Shiites and Sunnis killed one another, blew up one another's mosques. And you know, when they killed one another, even in the same religion, the same denomination, worshiping and blowing up mosques to their same God, Allah. They are awarded with 72 virgins. God help us. That's not our Bible. Instead, they're going to see the fires of hell. Because my Bible says in Revelation 21, 8, the fearful and unbelieving and abominable whoremongers and murderers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burneth with fire and brimstone. Revelation 22, 15, outside of heaven are dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Is it any wonder that Jesus in his day talked to people like that in Matthew 23, 15, says, Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you can pass sea and land to make one convert, and when he's made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourself. And he said again in verse 33, You bunch of snakes, how shall you escape the damnation of hell? And I'm speaking out tonight because this blasphemy law is rotten. And Sharia law is worse, and I'm going to make a video on it very soon. Why? Because under Sharia law, they now have the right to do all the killing they want and never face a trial, even if they're in America or any other nation. Because the laws of that nation don't apply to them. They're under Sharia, and they can do anything. Mm, Jack, well, friends, I'm going to be coming back to something that the United Nations did concerning the blasphemy law. 
very, very important. But first, I want to say we only have 10 days left on this wonderful offer, one that you really, really need. So please don't put it off. Take a look once again at the promo. Barack Obama, the president of change, has shortchanged America and Christianity. Ambassador Bolton, who served our nation under several presidents, backs this claim because of Obama's massive cuts to our nation's military defense budget, as well as attempting to reduce or even eliminate our nuclear arsenal. The New York Times and Wall Street Journal reported shocking news about Obama's secret deals with Russia, Iran, and the Palestinians all to be fulfilled after the election. Guess why? Dr. Van Epi's No Punches Pulled video exposes Obama's deceitful promises. There's more. Abdullah, the Egyptian freedom fighter and writer for the pan-Arabic paper, Elif, warns Americans that the Obama administration supports terroristic organizations including the Islamic Nakta of Tunisia, the Islamic militias of Libya, the Justice Party of Morocco, and at home the Islamic Society of North America. This radical lobby is becoming the greatest group ever to penetrate and infiltrate the White House. Presently, thousands of godly Christians have been slaughtered and hundreds of Christian churches bombed or burned in Egypt, Iraq, Afghanistan, Nigeria, Kenya, Somalia, and Africa. Why is our leader so strangely silent? It's time to speak up for change, Mr. President. For further startling and documented evidence of what in the world is happening, order the video, The President of Change Shortchanges America. Oh, there's the 800 number, there's the address. Please don't put it off. Last 10 days about everything we've been talking about the last uh, eight weeks is on here also, as well as everything you just saw in the promo. And I'll be sending you America's Most Biblically Hostile President. It's a manuscript of all the things our president has done. And so against the Bible and against Christians. So please don't put off calling the president of change short changes. America, and I will be giving you the manuscript also. 800 number, address, make the call right now. And now I said I would be talking about the United Nations and what they did about the blasphemy law. Now this means, of course, any insult to Islam. Take a look how the UN encourages religious murder. Anti-blasphemy laws are barbaric and certainly doesn't deserve endorsement by Turtle Beach or by the United Nations. The curse of blasphemy laws. Here we go. The blasphemy law carries a death sentence for anyone who insults Islam. Critics say it has been used to persecute minority faiths. And just say no to blasphemy laws. Now, somebody who did, and of course that is Hillary Clinton. And this is what she had to say. The time has come for the international community not only to reject the United Nations resolution protecting blasphemy laws, but to directly condemn blasphemy laws as violations of freedom of religion and speech. Well said. And now going on, next comes Sharia. Now there's the blasphemy law. Here's the Sharia law. You know what happened? 15,000 gathered to apply Sharia in the United States. Oh, Jack, I cannot believe this last headline. 15,000 gathered there in Hartford, Connecticut. Would you like to say a word about that, Jack? I think it's very interesting. I want to make a comparison not to be destructive, but just for educational purposes, to show you the difference between the Surah and God's Holy Word, the Bible. First of all, if you say anything against Islam, they first of all will put you to death through crucifixion, Surah chapter 5, verse 22, or through beheading, and that's Surah 46, 4. Now, next week, don't miss it. This is the most requested program I've ever done. It's a repeat of the blasphemous things they say against our Jesus as their prophet. Tell others about it. And what are we to do about it? We have love because of Jesus. He said, love your neighbor as yourself, Mark 12, 31. And what does it mean? Do no harm to your neighbor, Romans 13, 10. Let's go on. 
Jesus said in Luke 6, 27 and 28, love your enemies. Do good to them that hate you. Bless them that curse you. And pray for them which despitefully use you. And we don't go around killing one another. Instead, listen to Jesus again. 1 John 3, 16. Not 3, 16. 1 John 3, 16 in the back. He says, Hereby perceive we the love of God because God, that's Jesus, laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for one another. None of this killing of people of the same faith like they're doing. Oh, Jack, I love that. I love that, don't you, friends? Well, you know, it's not just the goal of Al-Qaeda to take over Europe, but they want to take over the whole world. Now, the Wall Street Journal, four Britons admit to London Stock Exchange bomb plot. Remember? All right, there are the four again. Spain alleges Al-Qaeda plot again. Spain arrests three alleged Al-Qaeda terrorists carrying explosives. Let's go on. Danes arrest three men suspected of preparing terrorist act. Oh, here's an Egyptian-born British clerk in the United States to face terrorism charges. Now, friends, I did say they want to take over the world. Can you see all these different countries around the world that are saying, hey, they're trying to take over. Let's go on to our neighbor to the north, Tories, Sunni Islamist extremism, Canada's top security threat. And here we have our FBI director. Recent terrorism plot shows need for surveillance power. Terrorism should be main focus. Now you're going to see a picture here of this gentleman, the Grand Ayatollah Khomeini. And uh, Jack, he sort of started the whole thing here. Maybe you'd like to read what he has to say there. He was exiled in France and returned and started this whole mass of terrorism among the Islamic people. The spirit of the Grand Anatoly Khomeini lives on in Iran. This is the same Khomeini who said in 1981, I say, let Iran go up and smoke provided Islam emerges triumphant in the rest of the world. Global takeover. Mm, my, oh, my. And here's another one. Grand Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. Now look at what he has to say. The Supreme Leader of the Islamic Revolution, Ayatollah Sayyid Ali Khamenei, announced that uprisings and movements in the Muslim countries serve as a prelude to greater developments in the rule of Islam over the world world. Global. Now this next one, Jack. Mohammed Islam Kabani, and he's the chairman of the Islamic Supreme Council of America. Headman. And yes, this is what he has to say, if you'd like to read that. We see that the Mukti will lead a world revolution that will institute a new world order based on the religion of Islam. The Mukti will offer the religion of Islam to the Jews and Christians if they accept it they will be spared otherwise they will be killed now get it and prophet jesus will be the executioner under mukti and islam will be victorious over all the religions of the world and that is the man for whom rick warren spoke twice and someone said oh he was probably there to tell him about jesus no that's not their jesus and next week Folks, I want you to tell everyone you know, I'll show these three men again and what they're saying and what they teach about Jesus. We ought to be the angry ones. We ought to stand up for our Jesus. They make him the executioner of all Jews and Christians who will not convert. The takeover by Islam of the world next week. Folks, my heart's heavy. Does the Bible teach anything like that? Yes, a world dictator is coming to power in Revelation 13, verse 1. He has power over all kindreds, tongues, people, and nations, verse 7. All the world worships him, verse 8. Daniel 11:26 26 says that he magnifies himself above every god. And I used to think that was just all the European Union because of Daniel of chapter 7, verses 7, 8, 20, 24, chapter 12, verse 3 of Revelation 13, 1, and chapter 17, verses 3, 7, 12, and 16. But then I saw what Martin Luther and John Calvin said 500 years ago. There were two legs on that image in Daniel 2, verses 31 to 33. The one was Islamic, the other was Rome. 
That is Islam and Christianity. We have come to that hour, and there's going to be a takeover, ladies and gentlemen, and it means that we don't have much time left because our Jesus is coming to our rapturous home. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Our Jesus is coming, and that is so important. He is coming back, friends. We have really emphasized the importance of having peace in your life in a troubled world. You can. You can have peace because you have Christ, the Prince of Peace, your Savior, forgiven of your sins. They're all gone if he's in your heart. That's why he died. Will you pray this prayer with Jack and allow the Lord, asking him to be your Savior? Jack. My Savior will never put anyone to death. My Savior died to save people, not destroy them. And Jesus loves you, and Jesus paid a tremendous price on that cross because of his love for you. Now, will you look at me and pray this and ask Jesus to come into your heart and be saved this day? Be ready for his return. Lord Jesus, precious Savior, the only Savior, Today, I thank you for Calvary and your death for me, your bloodshed to wash away my sins. Jesus, I come to you now asking you to come into my heart. Save me in your holy name. Amen. Amen. The most important prayer you ever prayed, so I trust that you ask the Lord to be your Savior. Write to me. There's my address. I'll send you absolutely free this little book. Called, I love it. First Steps in a new direction. He'll walk with you. All right, here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive our wonderful offer, and it's the last 10 days. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order The President of Change, Short Changes America, on DVD or VHS. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. And now back to Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck. Again, I emphasize 10 days left. So please, there's the, the 800 number. There's the address. I'll send you this wonderful manuscript with a lot of explanation on it with your order. I want to leave you with a very, very good thought. And so often we read the Bible and say, whoa, I've got an opinion too, but this is important. If God has already told you what to do, you don't need to ask him again. So good to walk with the Lord in these days. Look forward to being your home again next week. Until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we. Bye-bye.